Model Making Guru is sponsored by eModels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. eModels.co.uk, make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, welcome to part three of our Patreon exclusive build and paint of the Jax Pacific 31 inch Master Chief from the Halos. Now, uh, where are we up to in the last episode? We got all the base painting done. Uh, now, I did actually film the next part, but it didn't come out. Uh, I've gone ahead and gloss varnished everything. So you can see now, all the things are nice and shiny, shiny. And this was just airbrushed on, and it was just my usual standard Pledge, floor care finish, two times more shine. You knew I was going to say that. So I gave it a coat of this. I will do at some point, unfortunately the video didn't come out so I didn't show it, but um, I will do at some point a how to gloss coat with this video. I keep meaning to do it, so I will get round to it. But as you can see, it's come out nice and shiny. Basic rule of thumb, it was a very light mist coat as a key coat, and then two thicker coats uh, to get the gloss. It's basically mist coat, air dry it, give it you know 30 seconds, then a heavy coat, give it 30 seconds of air drying with the airbrush, give it another heavy coat and then leave it to dry. Now, I did solve the problem of how to gloss var gloss? How to gloss varnish, smashing, outstanding. <sighs> I won't do that again. Uh, how to gloss varnish things that I can't put a, a clip onto to hold it up. The problem with this kit is all the parts are really big so normally I'll have a piece and I'll have like a, I'll have a grippy stick. So I'll have a grippy stick and a piece on the end and I'll gloss varnish it and stick it in a piece of foam. That wasn't on camera, was it? Grippy stick, piece of kit, gloss varnish it, stick it in a piece of foam and therefore it can dry. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll put them in a plastic box so they don't get loads of dust. Can't really do that with this because these pieces are all mahoosive. And if you look at this, for example, this piece, there wouldn't be anywhere to attach a grippy stick to anyway. And even if I could, it's too heavy. It would just fall off. Came up with a cunning plan. The pieces that I could just put on a grippy stick, because there were one or two, I did. For things like this and the head and the arms, where there's nowhere I can particularly mount it while it's drying, I can't just put it flat on the surface because the varnish will stick. What I did was, tied a piece of string through the, the vents in the barrel and then... I got in the bathroom, we've got like an A-frame that you can hang drying clothes off. So I just put that over the bath and hung these off it, just hanging in midair, floating, you know, on a piece of string. And I didn't mind that was a little bit of, you know, varnish missing there. So basically in our bathroom, we had a clothes drying rack full of bits of Master Chief drying that I couldn't put anywhere else. So that was quite weird. But I chose the bathroom because it's pretty much a relatively dust-free room in this house. There aren't many relatively free, dust-free rooms. Uh, and it came out fine. So yeah, I just had to get some string and hang it up. So that was a bit of a pain. So the gloss coat has been done. It's been given 24 hours to dry. And the next step is to do a small number of decals. Obviously this thing doesn't come with any decals. So we're gonna have to customize. Now the only real markings the kit did have or the figure did have were two little red triangles here. Um, now what I've done, I do have a few, I've raided my decal stash and I've got lots and lots of, I know it's overexposed and not coming out. Lots and lots of bits of Gunpla decals and other decals here and there. Uh, what have I got? There was one interesting one I wanted to show you. Via Ist. Okay, I'm going to have to adjust the white balance. So I raided my Gunpla decals. And there's lots of little markings and, you know, triangles and things like that. I was hoping to just find two red triangles that I could use. But I couldn't find any. But what I did find was on this third party decal set for uh for xeon markings some nice numbers and these are in white and these will be perfect assuming they'll fit they might not fit assuming they fit i can put these on the ammo counter if they don't fit if they're too big i've got some other little decals here and there that will also do as ammo counter decals and I'll explain how we do that when we do the ammo counter let's change this white balance back for you so hopefully those will fit i'm not hmm, let's have a look that's the piece. Yeah, not going to fit. Okay, so not going to use those. Oh well, never mind. I've got other numbers on sheets that I can use here and there. They won't be exactly the right font, but it'll do. It'll do. So, 
I need to make some red triangles. I haven't got any red triangles I can use. So rather cunningly, what I've done is I've got some uh, leftover decals from my Revell Colonial Viper because I didn't use the red stripes. So all I've done is I've cut a couple of pieces off in triangles. Now, because I've cut the decal, the edges are a bit rough. And you can see I've put one on here. It's only just gone on. Oh, hello. There's a bit in there. Don't know where that's from. Put that back on. Uh, they've only just gone on. And it's a bit rough around the edges, but that's fine because it just looks like it's chipped and weathered. So not a problem at all. I'll be able to put some chipping over that to boost it further. So that's one. Get the other one done. Uh, because these are small decals, I'm just going to use my uh, method that I stole from Tony Fairclough over at Helgen 3.5, which is just microset and microsol. And you've seen me do this before. So uh, I've changed the, I've, I've got new bottles and I've got the right numbers now. This is the first one you use. This is the second one you use. Yes, they're the right way around. Yes. So got my little bit of decal. Turn it upside down. Get myself some micro set, which is the one that is the setting solution for when you're placing the decal. Uh, is that on camera? Yes. Uh, I'm going to soak the back of the decal. Give me tweezers. Soak the back of the decal with the micro set. And this is in place of water. I don't know why I put that in there. I don't need more just yet. And I'm just going to tease it to make sure I wait till it becomes loose and movable. And this is instead of water, basically. Uh, and you can do this for small decals. It's absolutely fine. It's actually a little bit faster than farting about with water. There we go. It's come loose. So let us get our decal picked up. Oops. Get my head in shot as well, no doubt. Uh, and quite simply, this is the straight edge where the decal hasn't been cut. So I'm going to put that here. Slide that off. Oops. And then give it a little bit of set. Because when you use micro set and sol, I get my head in shot all the time. They can be quite grippy and not move much. So give it a little touch of the micro set. Now what you'll see here is that I'm actually not hacking away at the decal. I'm not grabbing the decal or pushing it. There's a bit of spare there. Get off. Get off. Get off. I'll sort you out later. Um, I'm not pushing by putting the tweezers on the decal. I'm actually doing it by pushing the edge of the decal, which is absolutely fine. So I'm going to get these lined up reasonably similarly. Similar to the other one. I think that looks about right. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, so that's in place. I need to get rid of this thing. A little bit of off cut decal there. I'm going to give it one more touch of the micro set. And I'm not going to drench it. I'm just going to cover it and take the micro set to the edge of the decal so it can go underneath. I've actually put a bit too much on there. But that's fine. Uh, the reason you don't want to drown it too much particularly is because if you do, it will actually potentially eat away at your gloss coat. Now, I'm not actually touching the decal, I'm just wicking away this excess because I've got a bit more on there than I planned. So yeah, what you want to do is just coat the decal just up to the edge so a little bit can seep underneath. And there you have it, the decal is on. So I'm going to give that five minutes five or ten minutes to dry. When that's dried, I'll then go over it with the second part of the equation, which is microsol, and that just helps it bed down and flatten out. Now, it doesn't really need it because it's a flat decal on a flat surface, but I'll probably give it another coat. The other thing that microsol does is it, to a certain degree, eats away any clear film. Uh, so if you've got like a clear outline, I've just got a bit here at the top. If you've got a bit of a clear outline and it might stick up a little bit, just go over the decal with the micro sol, the red one, and that will sort of erode away that clear film a little bit. Uh, and before it starts eroding away the printed part, it should have reduced the clear bit so you can't see it quite so much. So that's those done. Now, I have some for the gun as well. Uh, I've got some little gun decals that I'm going to figure out. I've got a couple here for the, the fire one of these switches is the fire mode, so full auto, single shot and off. So I've got some little decals I'm going to try out and a couple of little things. And I'm going to put a Gumpler Easter egg on this as well. It's not relevant, but it's going to be fun. So I'll go off and get these done. Uh, and then when we come back, I'll show you what they're like. And we'll start with the next step, 
which is the gunk wash. Yes! Starship filth! Starship filth! Mm. Okay, so the decals are on. As you can see on here, I've put some little fire mode select decals on there. There is a little red one down here you can't quite see. And there's three here, just to whatever they are. I don't quite know what they are. Obviously, they're not accurate, but they're just little tiny decals, Gundam decals, just to give it some character. Over here, I put a little rectangle in there, and there's a little Anaheim Electronics decal there, which is obviously nothing to do with Halo, but it's like a nice little Easter egg. I always like to put something Gundam related on a model. So, yeah. Normally, when I do a model, I sign it inside somewhere, but I can't do that on this. So, that's my own little personal touch. You won't really see it. When he holds the rifle, you'll see this side, which is why I put those on there. So that's done. Uh, so on to the next step now, uh, which is the gunk wash. Now, if you've never seen me do a gunk wash before, where have you been? Uh, but I'm gonna show you how to do a gunk wash on the off chance that some of you haven't seen it before. Now, what is a gunk wash? A gunk wash is taking an oil paint and it has to be an oil paint. You can't do it with acrylics, you can't do it with enamels, you can't do it with lacquers or any other kind of paint and get the same effect. It absolutely has to be an oil paint. What we're going to do is we're going to make some shadowing and shading in, in all the recessed areas and the sort of the edges and we're also going to tint it a little bit just to darken things make it look a bit more dirty and grubby now you can use whatever oil paint you want you can use artist oil paint you can use i'm using the uh, mig 502 ab tai Lung artist paints uh, model making paints these are a little bit finer and less oily than normal artist oils but normal artist oils will do you just have to adjust the drying time with artist oils. It might take longer for it to dry. So I'm using uh, the uh, MIG 502 Abtile on colours. And we're going to use two. We're going to use black, which is just black. And we're going to use my favourite paint in the whole world, Starship Filth. Starship Filth. Yeah, Starship Filth. It's a wonderful kind of brown, dirty colour. Uh, and it just makes it look grubby and grimy and gives some shading and texture. So... How do you do a gunk wash? Well, like I said, it has to, absolutely has to be an oil paint. Don't even try it with a different kind of paint. You'll just get sadness. Oil paint. You need a brush in this case. I need a huge brush because this is a big kit. And you need a piece of soft cloth that can be microfiber. In this case, it's an old t-shirt that I use for gunk washing. Old t-shirts are fine. I use it for like gunk washing and stuff. It's not, this is paint. It's nothing untoward. It's just an old t-shirt. And you need gloves because this will get messy. And this is in place of doing something like a panel line wash and then a filter and everything else. It's just a really quick, handy way of doing a dirty layer and getting all your panel lines and recesses accented. Couldn't be easier. And this is the best thing in the world. I haven't done a gunk wash for ages, actually, so it's a nice return to form. Take your big brush. Small brush. I mean, big flat brushes are best, even on small kits. If you're doing a big gunk wash, use something big. Take your Starship Filth. Oh, one last thing. Sorry for the quick jump cut there. Uh, if you can't get yourself any Starship Filth, don't panic. It's fairly widely available now, but it does go through dry spells where you can't find it. Um, you can make your own. And all you need to do is go to the art shop and get yourself some uh, burnt umber or burnt sienna and some Payne's Grey. And all you do is you mix one of the burnt umber or the burnt sienna into the Payne's Grey till you get the colour you want. It's that easy. But again, it's an artist soil, so make sure you allow a drying time accordingly so dead easy starship filth big brush straight from the tube because i'm not doing anything in any other colors doesn't really matter straight from the tube and what you do you've got to be really careful and you've got a plug <laughs> this is what you do this is what you do this is all you need to do and you know what you need to do you know who's going to come and tell you what to do Exactly. Slap it on. Slap it on. So what we want to do is cover the whole piece in this oil paint from top to bottom, stem to stern. And it's great fun. Uh, your big brush of paint will last you quite a while. Make sure you work it into all the little crooks and nannies. You want to cover absolutely everything. Depends on what you're making. Sometimes you might not want to cover everything and you know you can be careful about it but i want to cover absolutely everything so i'm gonna get a bit more paint because that's running low now i i don't know how but tony over at helgen 35 he can make a brush full of this paint like a whole model i can't i have to reload the brush all the time but it doesn't matter don't worry about how much you're putting on just put on all the paint load the brush go for it don't think don't analyze don't 
consider or you know give it any thought at all just slap it on slap it on okay so that's now covered i'm going to do the inside as well but i'll just do the outside for now so you can see so that is now covered in starship filth and you can see the kind of color it is it's a nice kind of slightly oily bluey gray color it's really nice they do do other colors as well like engine grime and things like that so have a look at the ab tai lung range they're really really nice but like i say you can make your own any you can gunk wash with any kind of color it doesn't matter so we've got our piece here take your t-shirt and you do this get your t-shirt and just go rubbing 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 the paint away in fact let me just get my hand it's easier to do it by just getting your hand under a fold in the t-shirt and then just maybe use your thumb what i would say is try and keep it consistent like go in one direction like up down or left right or back to front just try and keep it in one direction and what you want to do is you want to try and keep your hand flat i know this is hard to see because it's a black t-shirt with a dark piece and it's kind of far away keep your hand flat because you want to try and keep the paint in the recesses so just very very gently start rubbing and you can rub off as much or as little as you want but i'm being very gentle now this is why you may be wondering uh, why i needed to gloss coat it the reason you gloss coat it first is if you do a gloss coat first the paint will be easier to remove and will tint the, the final piece less if you do a matte coat or you do this directly over the paint uh, then the paint will collect in the rough texture of the matte coat or the paint and it will be harder to get off and what it will do is tint the piece even more it'll be harder to rub away so because we've gloss coated it it's easier to get this paint off now for this bit in here what i'll do is get a little ball up of the t-shirt and just run it down the inside and if you do it right what you should find is that the paint will come off the flat open exposed areas but it will remain in any recesses but because of the way you're doing it as this sort of soft rubbing with a soft floppy t-shirt it should have a nice sort of gradient a nice fade between where there's paint and where there isn't and you'll come out with something looking a bit like that i know it's a bit dull let me change the white balance which made no difference at all excellent so you can see here we've got this beautiful fade here you've got the dark where it's around this lip and then it fades up to the green and then it goes dark again around the edge of this panel and that's the kind of fade you get you could airbrush this it's in, in, in a way it's kind of post shading you could airbrush this effect on but you've just seen how long it took me to do that it's going to take me maybe an hour to do the whole figure an hour and a half yeah it took me ages if i was airbrushing or doing anything funky so this is all you need to do this is a gunk wash and that's it uh you can go with cotton buds if you've got any like really tight fitty areas if you want to try and get the paint out or you can make a little spike of t-shirt and remove as much or as little as you want if you want to really remove it just go with some thinners uh, and a cotton bud or a makeup applicator and just wipe it off now the trick the reason you have to use oil paints uh, and that we're just linking to wiping it off if you go wrong the beauty of oil paints is that is something you can do oil paints take forever to dry once you've gunk washed your piece you must put this aside for at least at least five days five full days if i touch this now the reason i'm wearing gloves is it's messy but if i touch this now i'll just get a big fat fingerprint in there and um, it will take days for it to fully dry and cure the thicker you've got like in any recess if there's more it'll take longer so when you've done your gunk washing put it all to one side if you can put it in something where you can protect it from dust just dump it in a plastic box or something leave it for no less than five days more if you can uh, but at least five days and by the time five days has come it should be dry to the touch if you get a cotton bud and gently rub it you shouldn't have any paint transfer um, once that's done you'll need to make sure it's protected so before you go ahead and do any other weathering just to make sure uh, give your model a matte or a gloss coat depending on what weathering you want to do i'll probably give it a matte coat because i've only got chipping and other things to do after this so you, that's it mate. that's a gun wash that whole effect which i hope came out on camera because i know it's quite dark that whole effect 
using other methods and other paints and not just doing a quick overall gunk wash would take forever. You'd have to do all the panel lines, you'd have to fill things in, yada yada, it would take forever. I've just put shading on there, I've just filled in the panel lines and I've just filled in the recesses and I've darkened it and tinted it. So I've just done a filter, a panel line wash uh, and uh, some post shading in a minute. So that's that, that's a gunk wash. So I'm gonna go off and do the rest of it now. The reason I've got black paint as well is because the Starship fill doesn't really show up on the, on the gray parts. So I'm using black on those just to make them stand out a bit more. Uh, and when it's done, that's it. I mean, when I say about protecting it with varnish, it depends what you're gonna do. If I just decide I'm gonna do some paint chipping uh, and some dry brushing, I probably don't need to protect it because then I'm not gonna be wiping off any paint. If I wanted to do anything like filters or washes or panel line washes or anything like that, then I would actually varnish it first because if I go in with any enamels or thinned oil paints, the thinners in those are gonna take this back off again. So if you're gonna do anything like that, varnish it. If you're just gonna do dry brushing and sponge chipping and things like that or just brush painting, that's fine. You don't have to varnish it. Uh, I might not, I might leave it like this and then matte varnish it at the end. So it depends what I'm gonna do. So I'll go off and get the rest of it done using the black for the dark gray parts and the Starship filth for the greens. And when we come back, we'll do the next step, which I'm not sure what that is yet. Oh, uh, one other thing as well. If you've put decals on a model, before you do your gunk wash, just gloss varnish over the decals, just to lock them in and protect them so you don't take them off when you're rubbing the model. Uh, I'm not gonna re-gloss varnish the whole rifle because that will be an epic ball pa pain in the arse. Epic ball? I was gonna say epic pain in the balls, but that's not even a phrase. Epic pain in the arse. I'll just very gently brush over the decals themselves just to lock them in so when I'm rubbing the paint off it doesn't it doesn't uh, pull them off if you are brush gloss varnishing your model do be aware doing a gunk wash if you've brushed the gloss varnish in your model is not ideal if you brush the gloss varnish on it's going to have some slight brush marks and uneven surfaces even something like the pledge it won't dry perfectly flat so when you rubbing the paint off, it may collect any brush marks. So it's not recommended to do a gunk wash if you've brushed your gloss varnish on. Airbrush your gloss varnish if you can. You can do it with a matte, like I said, it just means it will be darker and more tinted. So if you're gonna try a gunk wash, experiment using a matte and a gloss varnish and see the different effects you get. It depends on what color you're using. Uh, it's also very good if you want to put rusty, rusty dirt effects on the model, just use a rusty colored oil paint, buff it off, it's brilliant. Anyway, enough talking and knocking the camera. I'll go and get the rest of this gunked yeah, that's why you wear gloves. And if you can, put an apron over your t-shirt and stuff or whatever you're wearing, because you probably get oil paint on that as well. I'll go away and get this done, and when we come back, we'll do whatever the next step is. Back in a moment. Okay, so on to the next step. The oil paint has had time to dry. Bit of a confession, it's had a bit longer than five days. Um, I kind of accidentally started playing Fallout 4 again. That took me up for a few days. If you finished Fallout 4 and you played through it, uh, and you know you're done with it but you never tried mods go back and try mods whether you're on PC Xbox or PS4 just go back and try mods it's just reopened the game for me I'm now wandering the wastelands rocking an M1 Garand uh, a, a car 98 from a slightly medium to long range and a, a Mosin Nagant sniper rifle that's got 3,000 damage I'm, I'm wearing NCR Ranger armor all my all my my companions are wearing silly outfits I remove the ocean so I can wander around and explore all the all the ghouls and our slow shambling zombies that require headshots to kill loads of stuff i'm using a tablet instead of a pit but it's just great i've all these mods i've got and i've got this brilliant rainstorm effects that are just so cool go and get some mods if you if you tried it and got bored of it um go and get some mods go and go back to it and get some mods it'll just be a whole new game now i'm wandering around with this this uh, m1 garand which it's got this tiny little scope that you can see right through. It's not like everything's black and you get the scope. You actually see the edge of the scope and you can see through it, but the crosshair is so faint. You've got to take your time and place your shots. And you've only got eight rounds per clip. So, and yes, it makes that ping sound. So yeah, go back and go back and get some mods. It takes it from a, a average game to a really engrossing game. So yeah, I got back into that. So this has had about a week and a half, two weeks. So anyway, the oil paint dried. I did give it a matte coat in the end just to be safe, just to, to you know protect the paint from everything else I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna be doing any washes or anything, but I thought, screw it, I'll just matte coat it anyway. You can see the oil paint has given the, the Starship filth has given this lovely shading effect. 
It's also darkened everything up significantly. As you can see on this pauldron here, the dark pieces which were here are now not that different from the light pieces. You can probably see it better on camera. It does seem to come out better on camera, but these are looking a little bit less distinct from the base color, but it's all gravy. So that's come out. What's the next step? The next step is to try and bring back some edge definition, and in some cases, some sort of scuffing and scraping effects. So for that, we're just gonna do some simple dry brushing, and we are going to use Citadel's Death World Forest. Now, if you remember, we used this at the start. Now, I apologize, I can't remember right in the start of episode one or two, whenever we started the filming, because it's been a while, because Fallout 4, whether I just used Neat Death World Forest for the green, I can't remember, go back and check. Anyway, if we did, it's now a slightly lighter shade than the model, the paint that's on the model, because this has been darkened. So we can go back and use the original base color as the highlight. So, got myself a dry brush. This is just a big flat uh, Citadel large dry brush, but any big flat brush will do. Make sure it's reasonably soft. Uh, got some of the Death World Forest in the wet palette. Even though we're dry brushing, try and stick to using a wet palette. It just means this paint will stay wetter longer and you can play with it. And it also means that when you're putting the paint on, it's not gonna dry out quite as fast because it's all, it's all got, you know, it's all, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Hydrated, that's the word. It's still hydrated, so it's gonna last a bit longer and you'll get a bit more mileage and it won't go bitty and horrible. So you've seen dry brushing before. All we do, get some paint on the brush. Dead generous, la 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 la. Get the tissues, get most of that paint off. But not too much, we want a bit of shading going on. And then quite simply, we're just gonna go over the edges. Now you can do as little or as much as you want, as with everything. I find with these Citadel paints, it, with like metallic paints, you want almost nothing on there at all. With these Citadel paints, you can actually go a bit heavier uh, and get a bit more paint in there. But all I'm gonna do is I'm just kind of keeping it around about 45 degrees to the edge of whatever I'm painting. And I'm just gonna run it over the edges just to bring back some definition. And it should catch on the edges and on raised areas quite nicely. And you can even do it on things like this, just to get some, do it on camera there, get some sort of faded and shaded effect. Now what I'm doing is I'm not sitting the edge, I'm pulling it back from here. I'm doing it like that and then I'm flicking it back. So what I tend to get is paint on the edge here, because the little edge there, and then it builds up a little bit and fades out towards the back of the piece. So what you get is that kind of slightly, if it comes out on camera, slightly scraped, faded effect. Now again, you can build it up. If you want an area with a bit of a lighter color, perhaps like a light patch, I know this is probably the worst piece to do it on because you can't quite see it. Uh, you can just concentrate as the brush runs a bit dry, you can do a bit more work in that area on the surface and you can use circular motions or however you want and you can just build that paint up do it when you've almost used up all the paint on the brush when you first get the brush on there use that for your edges and then as it starts to run out use that to go into the flatter areas you can run it along the edges and it will just help soften that a little bit and then when you're done your brush starts to run a bit low just go back, get some more paint and repeat the process. And that's all we need to do. So I need to go around all the armor, all the light green armor. I could probably do it on the dark green armor as well. Let's give it a try and see what it looks like. It should work quite well on the dark green armor. Just to give back a bit of edge. Now what I'll do on the dark green armor is again, I'll wait till my brush is almost in need of reloading. Just so that I'm not kind of changing the dark green so much to a light green. I just want with the dark green, I just want to really hit the edges to lighten them up. So I'll wait till the brush is almost ready to be reloaded just to pick up those edges. And I know it probably doesn't come out on camera very well, but that's all really I need to do. So I need to go around and do this on all the armor, all the raised edges, not on the gray parts. On the gray parts, we're going to do something different with those. So we'll probably leave those till a lot later on. And for that, we're probably going to use some oil paints because that we do need nice smooth shading on those because uh, they came out quite dark. So we're going to be doing something a bit different. They're still dry brushing, but using an oil paint. So I'll go off and get the rest of the armor done. And when we come back, we'll do the next stage. Now you can see there, just as an example, this is the bit I've just dry brushed. Hope this comes out on camera. I can't tell until I watch it back. This is the bit we just dry brushed. And here's the bit before it was dry brushed. 
it looks a little less lively, a little lifeless compared. So I'm just going to go around and start applying all the dry brushing. Okay, so the green has all been dry brushed. It's quite a subtle effect, so I don't know if it'll come out on camera, but it's there. It just gives the eye some kind of edge to focus on. So it's it's very subtle, but it's there. It just tones down the, the Starship filled gunk wash a little bit and just gives it that kind of slightly patchy look. Uh, so I've done all the greens. I need to do this part of the gun, the dark gray. I need to do this part of the gun, the light gray. So what we're going to do for the dark gray, we're just going to use some bog standard Mechanicus standard gray. Exactly the same as before, we're going to dry brush. So I've got myself the tissues. I've got myself the paint in the wet palettes. I'm going to do exactly the same. The paint straight from the pot onto the wet palette. That should keep it hydrated at just the right level. Get most of it off on the tissue, which you can't see. And then we're going to do exactly the same. But on this gray part, we're going to be quite light with it. We don't want to do too much because there's going to be metallic shading on here as well. Do it on camera, dear. There's going to be metallic shading on here as well. So on this bit, we're just going to go fairly light. And we're just going to pick out some of the edges and give a little bit of fading. Obviously, you're going to get some of it not on an edge, but that's fine because it just gives it that slightly worn feel. So I don't know if this will come out camera at all because it's all dark colours on other dark colours. So it's just a subtle bit of a a zing just to give some definition especially on these raised parts here where it's all funkiness and raised just makes it look a little more lifelike a little more interesting and lively gives the eye something to to look at let's do this side as with most things I do you don't have to think too much when you do this you just do it Okay, now for the last colour, and for that one we're going to use Administratum Grey, which is actually the colour we used for this stripe. As you can see, it's very similar. This is just a bit darker, uh, but we're just going to be using it on this grey part here. So I've got some on the brush. Uh, oh, sorry, Administratum Grey. There you go. So exactly the same. Get it off on the brush. Now this is a layer paint, so it's a little thinner than the others, which were base paints. So try and get more of it off. And for this, we're just going to dead simply, again, like we did on the gray bit, just very carefully work it around the edges, just to give little highlights. We're not gonna go too overboard on this. Now it will come out slightly lighter than the stripe we painted on there, which is fine. So we're gonna focus on the edges while we've got most of the paint still on the brush. Now it's a bit messy, but that's fine because we can blend it. You do have a few seconds to to do some blending. So I'm going to go around this edge here. Now I'm going to get a bit more off on the brush because there's still a bit too much on there. And then we're going to start trying to blend it. So let's see if we can get this black. I hope this comes out on camera because I'm kind of a bit close up really, but never mind. So we'll just do a bit of blend in there. And this is just making a kind of, it's blending the brush marks and it's also giving it a slightly scuffed look, which is perfect for what we want. You just get that kind of, oh, do it on camera. Slightly scuffed look. Try and keep it to logical areas, like where there'd be the most traffic, so like where there'd be the most contact with your hands, or just generally where edges might come into contact with things when you put the weapon down or whatever. So we'll try and pick up that edge there. Oops. But don't forget, we are going to do, or I say don't forget, I haven't even mentioned it yet. Uh, we are going to be doing some sort of chipping and things like that, metallic chips and metallic dry brushing. So don't worry if it looks a bit OTT at first. And also, when you first brush it on, it will look a bit more stark than when it actually dries. When it dries, it will kind of soften a bit, so that's fine. 
Now I'm going for here this kind of look of a found weapon like Chief has found this on the battlefield. As you do when you play the game, you just pick weapons up all over the place. So it's going to be a bit battered and worn. Somebody's used this. Soldier's been using this. Chip's Dubbo. It's his weapon. He's left it on the battlefield when he obviously got killed uh, or, or floodified on installation four. I know my halo. So there we go, that's going to do. I'm going to blend it a little bit. You can smudge it with your finger a bit if you want, just to smooth it. Nothing wrong with that. So that's looking nice and worn now. Apologies, a big chunk of that was off camera. Uh, now it looks a bit scratchy and scrapey, but that's fine. Don't worry too much. I so say we've got other stuff to do and things get scratched and scraped so there you go uh, now we still need to do the the black undersuit for the for the chief himself but we're going to leave that to last um, because we're going to use oils for that so the next step now is to get some metallic edge highlighting going on same as we've been doing but dry brushing so i'll go and get these brushes cleaned off let them dry and we'll do that back in a moment okay now for the next step and we'll make this the last step in this video um, we're going to do two lots of metallic sort of chipping and weathering uh, we're not going to do chipping just yet the first thing we're going to do is dry brushing some of these edges you can see here here's the te helmet it's been nicely dry brushed you've got some nice light and dark areas on here it's more of a fade but you get a few little patches and i did a little bit of stippling as well on the green so you do get a little bit of patchiness here and there which is kind of cool very subtle probably doesn't come out on camera now for the next one we're going to do the first step of the metallics which is dry brushing um, but we're going to do something different we're going to use an actual citadel dry paint this is called necron compound and if you look at it it's just gloop it doesn't move you couldn't pour it out there if you tried the idea is you don't need the wet palette it's just so full of pigment compared to binder and everything else that you just literally dip your brush in get it on the tissue and there you are ready to roll so we're going to be a bit more careful. I've got a smaller brush. This is a base brush, but I've got a smaller brush for this. So we're going to get some on the, get some on Teb brush. We're going to do the usual, get it off on the tissue. And what we're going to do is reasonably carefully, we're just going to start picking at edges, just very subtly. Now, what's this going to do? Hopefully, it comes out on camera. Uh, is it's just going to really highlight these edges a little bit. I'm not going to do every edge. We just want to start making little areas. We might do a little bit of, say, patchiness here, just as if it's worn away at the top. And again, apologies if this doesn't come out on camera. But this paint is designed purely for dry brushing, so it's so thick. The pigment is brilliant. So I'm going to go under here. And it's not something you're really going to see straight away, but it's something if you hold it to the light, and hopefully it'll come up. If you hold it, let's put a little bit down here. Let's put some on the bottom of this plate. If you hold it up to the light, you'll just get that little bit of a little bit of a sparkle from it, and you'll see it out the corner of your eye. You'll know it's there. So we're just going to do it. not every edge, not every corner, but where it makes sense or where it looks cool. We'll just put some in so i'm going to do this all over his armor and this is for as i said we're going to do two things we're going to do painting on paint chips and that's obviously where paint has been chipped off because the idea is his armor the mjolnir armor is still going to get some damage because you know there's times when his shield goes down and he's being shot at so yeah he's still going to get damage to his armor even though he's got shields so this the, the the chipping when we do paint chipping we actually paint on paint chips in metallics that'll be where paint has physically chipped off this is more a subtle effect to suggest where paint has rubbed and worn so it's not actual chipping but it's just where the paint is rubbed thin and in some places it's rubbed down to the bare metal so it's if you go and look at something that's worn it has little rubbed areas where it's very subtle but you'll just see that little metallic twinge so it's just really to bring out the edges and have some little patchy areas so I'll go off and get the rest of this armor done and we're going to really stick to things like edges like this edge here where it makes sense we're not just going to put massive splobs of this everywhere and then when I've done this that'll be the enough for this episode so while I'm doing this I shall say 
thank you so much for watching i'll show you how this comes out at the start of the next episode thank you so much for watching thank you so much for supporting me as you know this is a patreon exclusive bill so it's just for you guys thank you so much i can't thank you enough you allow me to keep doing what i'm doing and i love you for it don't forget if you're not already a member and you probably are but if you're not already a member of the model makers boom hut do pop along and join we're up to about almost 2,000 people now how cool is that 2,000 members all people like you uh, at all different levels of skill from professionals there's some professionals on there there's people who are just starting out and people who just do a little bit for fun they've not really made much and they and there's even people that don't actually make models at all on there they just like to hang out and see what other people do they're interested in model making but they don't actually want to do model making and that's fine and they're all supporting each other they're all really cool people post up their stuff and get opinions so do go along and check it out it's uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash model boom hut do go along and check it out if you're not a member already why go and become a member uh, but thank you again and just as an example you can see here the kind of effect i'm getting there's a very subtle sort of edge here and just by doing that i'm just giving it that slightly worn look and going back to fallout 4 if you need inspiration for how to make things look a little bit worn and beaten go and uh, play some fallout 4 because on the loading screens of which there are many they're approximately all the loading screens you get a close-up view of a model from the game like a, a, an item or a, a character or something uh, and there's often shots there of things like a protectron and things like that and you can see it's lovely how they've done the weathering on these things it's supposed to be like 200 years old these artifacts that you have in the game so go on especially things like the protectron model or the weathering on a nuka cola vending machine and things like that. go and check them out it's great inspiration while i was playing it the other day it's like yeah I, I, i'm getting ideas as to how i can weather the chief's outfit so yeah things like that i always say go and look in real life but look for other sources as well and the loading screens of fallout 4 and there are many are perfect for examples of how they do the weathering and close-up shots of some of the weapons as well they're just brilliant they put a lot of effort into making them look realistic it's a pity you don't really see that in the game However, I have ordered an Xbox One X, so I'm hoping that when that turns up, when it's when it go when it comes out, I'll be able to see all the models in 4K resolution. So I'll see all the 4K textures, which should be interesting. Although I've only got a 1080p TV, so they'll be 4K scaled to 1080p. Yeah, I'm an idiot. What can I say? Anyway, I'm going to get this done. Thank you again for watching. Do take care of yourselves. Stay tuned for the next one. We'll get some chipping done, and probably the next one will be the last one because I don't think there's a, a massive amount left to do. Yeah, we've got to do the visor. That might be an episode all of itself. Yeah, that's a point. <laughs> anyway, yes, I'll go off and get this done. Go off and make something awesome. Go off and be awesome. There you go. You can see the kind of effect we're getting now. Just very subtle. Just hints and suggestions. Go off and make something awesome. It's really hard. I'm waffling now because I'm actually getting carried away doing this. It's quite mesmerizing. It's going to take me a while. Be awesome. Do awesome ending script <laughs> adios amoebas wait wait not finished yet I just wanted to show you quickly an example of what I was sort of talking about um, I finished the helmet and I realized uh, I could give you a better look so this is the kind of effect I was looking for with this dry brushing you can see there it's that kind of mottled faded rubbed away paint effect it's not chipping it's like a, a foundation layer for chipping so that's the effect I was looking for like this bit here with the line across this ridge it's that kind of effect using this dry paint or any dry brush paint you can kind of fade and for some reason metallics are the best paints to do fading and blending effects with acrylic wise because uh, acrylics don't really blend they dry too fast but with metallics you can get away with a lot so I just wanted to quickly show you that's exactly the kind of effect I was looking for let me make sure that's in focus for you Zoop. that kind of patchy effect and what we'll do in the next episode when we start off in the next one is we'll go in and where we want to put some chips we'll put some chips in just to work with that and complement it so i just wanted to show you that because i've just finished it now so 
it's gonna take me a while to do the rest of the armor that just took me about 10 minutes so yeah it's gonna take a while <sighs> adios amoebas